We are live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Police Off the Cuff After Hours. Uh, I'm Mark DeMeo, your host, my co-host, my partner in all things law enforcement, Bill Cannon. What's up, buddy? Great to have uh, the Nassau County Police Commissioner here tonight. I don't know how we got him to come on the show. What happened there? <laughs> Well, this I is want to thank again. Bill. Bill is uh, really good at, at what what he does, which is getting our guests. And um, <laughs> this is a great guest. Our guest tonight so happens to be the Nassau County uh, Police Department Police Commissioner. He was actually an NYPD cop for two years, and then he did what every NYPD cop wishes you can do. He passed the Nassau County Police Department police test and actually got called in. And then uh, he was. Uh, he, he was a Nassau County cop for, I don't know, 32 years, was it? I'm 38 now. Around? What? I'm 38 years total. 38 years total. Um, and then he became the police commissioner. Patrick J. Ryder. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. Pat, did you actually pass all the tests or did you just get appointed police commissioner? No, I I, I took the sergeant's exam. I uh, started, We our intel center was right after 9-11. They asked me to take over the Intel Center. I built the Intel Center. I ran the asset forfeiture. We combined the two together. I was doing that for about 17 years. And then uh, the outgoing county exec, Ed Mangano, appointed me as the deputy commissioner. And I, I, I knew it was a dead end road. I had a year to run with it, but I was in my 34th year at the time. And I got called. The county exec came in. She goes, I'll give you 30. I thought she goes, I'll give you 60 days and then we're going to replace you. I said, okay, no problem. I said, I've already maxed out. I'm deputy commissioner to ask any police. Within 30 days, she picked up the phone and she called me one day. She goes, look, I'm done. You want to be my commissioner? I said, yeah, absolutely. That's oh, four years God. ago now. Wow, that's and, great. Well, now, to our audience that is not lo uh, from New York, um, can we let's explain to each other, uh, well, let's explain to them what Nassau County is. So we have the NYPD which covers the five boroughs of, of New York City. And then as we head further out east towards Long Island, um, the police department, there's a different police department. It's in, uh, at first, it's the Nassau County Police Department. And then if you continue going out further east, it becomes the Suffolk County Police Department. Now, how big is the Nassau County Police Department? How many officers? So we're, we're the 13th largest in the country right now. We have 2,500 sworn, another 1,400 civilians. And they, are they making the big bucks now, or did Suffolk uh, surpass? I, I think them? I think Suffolk's in front of us right now. But you know the PBAs they battle all the time to so see who can get out in front. Well, <laughs> that's an interesting thing that Bill, Bill brings up. Um, you know the NYPD, although it's the it's the, there's no Nassau County Police Department TV show. Okay, it's it's always NYPD. Um, maybe once in a while they'll, they'll drag somebody, you know, you'll come out to Long Island and we'll yell at you, get off my crime scene, it's ours now. But um, <laughs> for the most part, every single TV show is made about the NYPD, but they get paid a lot less. Uh, the Nassau County Police Department and the Suffolk County Police Department, they're kind of always battling on who gets paid more. Um, but you guys pay, you guys get paid significantly more money than the NYPD. How much more is it? It's like 30 grand more, right? Well, actually, the NYPD has actually done good in their last couple of contracts. Credit to Pat Lynch um, they, and Eddie, Eddie Mullins and stuff. They fought well to get better better salary. Um, I, I don't know the exact number that separates, uh, you know, the cop from the, you know, between between jobs, but it's, it, it's about 30 grand. <laughs> 30 grand extra. Oh, wow. That's amazing. I took the test, too. And uh, you guys never freaking called me. <laughs> You know, I'll see what I can do. We're, we're throwing you too many softballs. Let's get into it right now, all right? What do you see as the biggest problem, not just in Nassau, but policing nationally in this country in the last two years? Oh, first of all, the rhetoric that's coming at us, the attacks on us, uncalled for, right? So you got you got the incident that occurs with George Floyd. Everybody, nobody stands by that. Everybody agrees, you know, in the outcome of the trial, at least most do. It's, you can't go and now paint everybody with a broad brush. You, then you had other shootings, like in Chicago, the young kid with the gun. Cop had no choice. It's either this or this. And what's the difference between you? I'm dead or he's dead. The, the problem is people have to remember, you know, the ball starts rolling when the bad guy starts the act. We don't start it. They, they start that way. 
compliance is always an issue. We're, we're dying for people. Just comply. Comply. If you don't like the treatment, come and make a complaint. It goes through internal affairs. You guys all know that stuff gets investigated. But the biggest problem I see is that, and I said it the other day on a, on a Fox and Friends show with Brian Kilman. I said, we need universal training. It's not the NYPD. It's not Suffolk. It's not Nassau. You know, first of all, the NYPD, probably the greatest police department in, in the world. They train all the time. They got the best tools at, at their hands. But then you get out to Nassau. We train quite quite a bit, as as does Suffolk. You got to the Midwest, some of these countries, when did they ever train? And what kind of training do they teach them? So you need some kind of universal standard type of training that we can at least, when, it, when something bad happens, everybody has an understanding of this is why it happened. You know, it's when you can't excuse the, the knee on the neck for, for the nine minutes and 28 seconds. No, of course not. But you know something, Chief? When people say, especially politicians and people that don't know anything about policing, they say the cops need more training. They don't mean that because they don't want to pay for it. <laughs> and they don't want to take the cop off the road. They're full of shit that they say, oh, they need more training. Oh, really? You know, cop may have to get off the road for two weeks and there's no one to fill his spot. You still want him to get trained? You know, training costs money. And you know that, Commissioner, right? A hundred percent. And that's why in, in the current contracts that are being negotiated, we're throwing training days in because I have to train. You can't, you know, when I came on the job, you go back for in service for a week. Well, I haven't been to in service probably in 15 years now. You know, so we do go to the range. We teach you to shoot, but and we go over to Taser. But well, take the, the incident when the she yelled Taser, 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 then shot the kid. She didn't believe she had the Taser in her hand. Now, how many times did she train to pull the Taser? The one time a year that you go to the range. You know, it, it's something that you, it's that muscle memory. You need to practice how you play. That's why they have to standardize and they have to give us more time to train. And you're 100% right. It costs money and no politician wants to hear that. You're right. And yet there's a uh, – look, this guy, was it? Kaepernick is just coming out with a book right now. And it's a whole bunch of essays about uh, from different – I don't know, wh whoever they are. Um, but they're writing these essays on uh, the, not, not defunding the police, but abolishing police and abolishing prisons. So there's a tiny fraction – of um, at the same token, the, the whole opposite way. We're looking at New York City right now, the mayoral race. Bill, I told we talked about this, Bill and I, on the show before. All these guys, they stood on this platform about to fund the police or reform or police reform, and now they're all changing their tune because they see what happens. So yeah. we're, we're we're stuck in these two different worlds right now. There's there's uh, people that want to completely get rid of the police, and there's other people that. Uh, with a brain in their head, it says, no, 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 it's not going to work at all. Anyone that says defund the police should be run out of town. They have no business being on any ballot. They are morons. And yet, that's Cannon's law. You can take that to the bank. I, like right? <laughs> I just want to show you a quick video uh, of the cop who got shot last night in the NYPD and to show... There you go. That is the scene everybody wanted to see. An officer, Brian McGurin, four-year veteran, been on the job for four years, 28 years old, shot three times last night in bed -Stuy, rolled up on a, uh, well, a suspect after a gang shooting in the area. They were on patrol last night in an unmarked mm -hmm. The perpetrator allegedly wheeled, opened fire. The officer caught three bullets. And look at him. The fact that he was up and out of that wheelchair and walking, his bulletproof vest saved his life. There was no doubt about that. And he was in good spirits after that shooting last night at Kings County Hospital, just released moments ago at the top of our broadcast, into a car and home to rest. That is an amazing video, the fact that he got up like that. What a hero, huh? But you know something, Mark? It doesn't stop there. If you haven't been shot or shot at, that trauma stays with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. And I, he may never come back. And look, he was John Wayne getting up. What a, what a ballsy thing. I mean, that that had to make your heart flutter seeing him get out of the wheelchair. But, well, him getting out like that tells me he's going to come back. No, the trauma, the trauma of get, he gets that chest shot was a deadly shot. And yeah. he was saved by his vest. And then he shot two more times. I don't know if he'll ever come back. Yeah, you, people don't. They don't understand what we go through. You know, it's the emotional. You're pumped up when the incident. Look at the late, the young officer the other day grabbed that young kid and ran out of Times Square with the kid that was shot. It's a hero. This officer here the other day, it's a hero. They don't look at it. They don't respect our heroes. Just like, you know, you, Kaepernick, 
fact that he, 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 you kneel against the flag, what does the flag ever do? We give you that option that you can kneel, you know? What, and then the, the, the thin blue line flag, now that's, they say that's a symbol of hate. Symbol of hate, that represents our form. That's, right. you know, that's a flag of heroes. Just yeah. like the American flag is. There's like a police department somewhere I just read, and they had a little sticker on the back of their cars. Uh, it's a sheriff, um, and they told him, we, we, we really like you to take those stickers off the car. They only have like four cars. They're not even the police department for that particular town. They helped them out. And they're like, the police commissioner said, no, I'm not, I'm not taking them off. <laughs> Do your history. It's not, it, the thing didn't come out yesterday as an opposition to uh, the Black Lives Matter. That thin blue line has been for 40, 50 years now. Right. Uh, that's been a symbol for the police department. It's not new. So. You know, Commissioner, I wanted to just, sometimes I like to call out politicians by name. And there's this piece of shit from Queens. His, <laughs> name, is, his name is Daniel Drum, and he covers District 25. And he went at it the other day at a hearing with the police commissioner in a very, very disrespectful way. This guy was a teacher for 30 years. Right away, you know he's not our friend. He's a school teacher. Every damn person that gets arrested in these protests is somehow a teacher. You know, I'm not saying those professions are connected, but this guy's a bag of shit. And he's talking about how, why did the cops use all of this overtime? Because they were policing riots over the summer. That's why they blew the overtime budget. And then he also went into how he didn't think they policed the riots correctly. They were beating up people. This guy is a moron and he needs to be called out. His name is Daniel Drum. He's a 20 year politician. Go retire to Florida, you moron. <laughs> you know, the NYPD, they don't get the respect that they should, how they handled those riots in, in the city. And, it, and they were riots. Then they were not peaceful protests. You know, there are times there was many peaceful protests throughout the city of New York. And it went peaceful, no problem. But when Antifa and all these groups get involved and they start breaking windows and looting and stuff, they're just out there to steal and, and loot and rob. They're thugs. And, and the NYPD did an outstanding job handling it. They take a few incidents of the thousands and thousands of people that protested every single night in the city of New York. It, you know, that was a battle uphill all the way. And they did hey, a great how, job. Much, uh, how much are you affected by, uh, let's say, BLM and Antifa out in Nassau County? We get our pockets. Um, we, you know, we get a couple of different groups that continue to protest and go out and, you know, as we say, exercise their First Amendment. We've been very fortunate. We've had no violence. We've had no looting. We've had no burning. We're there in force, just like, you know, all, all of us are, you know, Nassau, Suffolk, and the NYPD. But we didn't have what was in the city. They knew the platform in the city. That's where they're going to get their airtime. That's when they start busting windows and it makes, and that feeds. And you start feeding into the other groups and they all start coming. You know, Commissioner, I also think that they recognize that you won't put up with it in Nassau County, nor will the electorate out there pull up with, put up with the bullshit that, New York City puts up with. And not just that, you got a mayor and a governor back in the rioters. You know? Our county exec has been great to us. Did she and look, I'm and I tell her I'm a Republican, she's a Democrat, and we have a great relationship. She's the boss, no doubt about it. But at the same time, she respects and and, and stands by law enforcement and law and order. That's great. You know, what do you think about some of the decisions in New York City, the diaphragm law? Uh, bail reform, uh, publishing the uh, disciplinary histories of cops on the internet. Uh, the hits keep happening. Um, the, the recent one where they took away the, um, what's, I'm not thinking of the right name, uh, where they can get sued much easier. I'm missing. Um, qualified immunity. Qualified immunity, right, where they took that away. I mean, how are they going to get anyone to be cops when they keep doing this. The hits don't stop, you know? Uh, it, it, it's a big problem, especially when you, you know, I'll give you my, what I did. When they talked about the diaphragm, you can't put, I, I stopped my kids, my kids, my cops, they are kids. I stopped my cops from going into the city. I said, we're not going in it. I said, I got it. I know you want to help out. You want to do your part. You want to go look for your bad guys? Not today. We're not going in there and, and I'm going to be standing there with your wife as you're getting indicted for doing your job. So, and I wrote the letter. I was asked to by the DAI in, in, in New York City. I wrote a letter, sent it in there in support uh, that, that it should be, it, you absolutely positively control the body by the frame of the body. The 
the low rates. We're always taught about that. You know, I, I got it. Uh, you know, I get chokehold. You, and but again, even chokehold, deadly physical force versus deadly physical force. Tennessee versus Ghana. It's a federal standard. You have a state and a city law that that outlaws it right now, so we can't use it. But in Tennessee versus Ghana, the federal statute, the Supreme Court decision says I can. You know, so what happens? Um, it's my life judged by what is the old judged by twelve but carried by six. You got to make right. a decision. And and yeah. I went after. I came after bail reform. I came after him hard. One of the top law ten. The whole bottom of his leg was ripped off in a car accident in Queens, in Elmhurst, with the burglar that got out three times. They kept letting him out. We went after him. We finally caught him. He threw the car, ran my guy over, took half his leg back up. So he's dying now. Can't come back to work because of bail reform. You know, it just, there was no common sense into the decisions. They didn't ask the experts. You know, they just listened to what was, it was almost like the defense bar was writing the laws for them up there. It's um for the for um for our audience that don't live in New York, it's such an interesting situation that we have here because we have like I mentioned earlier the NYPD that covers the five boroughs, and then you just if you just keep driving east further, next thing you know you're in Nassau County, and uh, I was I grew up in in New York, I grew up in Queens, and we knew growing up that. You know, whatever you were doing, if you if you if you got caught in Nassau County, that was way more severe, like than than if you got caught in Queens. So whatever you were doing, make sure you know exactly where you are. And it's just a funny. It's just so funny that the laws change and get so much harder, and that's why the the lives are so much better over there. It's just there's not. It's 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 a more. It's a better place to live. Well, I think it has more a lot to do in New York City with these progressive politicians. And yeah. it starts at the state level with Cuomo. And he doesn't get enough blame for this. He's out there every day selling his COVID plan like he's a used car salesman. And meanwhile, bullets are flying every night in New York City and people are getting shot because of his uh, criminal justice reform. And he walks around naming bridges after relatives. You know, like, are you kidding me? Dude, you're the one that caused this. And I know Pat, you don't want to. I'm I'm retired. I can say whatever I want. Yeah, you can't. You can't. And you'd love to. <laughs> Let me get out. Of <laughs> I say, hey, Pat, don't no. feel bad. I sit here too, man. I do the same thing. No, I, I just, listen. I I've said it plenty of times. I every action, everything that we do is started with some politician wrote the law. They wrote the law that makes the changes, and we have to enforce that law. That's the rule, right? So we go out and we enforce the rule, but then they want to understand why, you know, high-end burglaries are occurring, why the shootings are stepping up, why homicides are rising. You wrote the law. You're letting them out. We it's can't always, know, it's, it's always up to the administration. They belong in jail. It's always up to the administration. When I worked on the police department um, during the 20 years there, we had one uh, mayor. I came on Dinkins. They would blow pot smoke right in your face. What's up, Asifa? You couldn't do nothing. And then within a change of administration, next thing you know, you, you know, we got two changes of administration. Some guy's walking in Brooklyn, walking his dog in, in his pajamas, taking a hit off a of one hitter. And next thing you know, he's in the back of a van, <laughs> handcuffed because he was smoking pot in the street. You know, it's just, it's, it just changed. The streets got cleaned up. Uh, it became a much nicer place to live, but. It's just about the administration. And what we have right now is the current administration. And that's why we're in this situation. But, but they can all stand. They all stood the, together at the hospital last night making their speeches. And, you know, Patty Lynch said it right. You know, we're not the problem. We're the solution to the problem. We're the guys that are going to go out, the guys and gals, and keep you safe so you can go about your business in New York City and keep, keep your property values up and not let them go down. They're plummeting right now in the city. And, and who's going to go in there? Who wants to work in those buildings right now? You know, Commissioner, one of the things that I'd like to also highlight is how easily a gangbanger thought about shooting three shots at a cop, probably more than that, hit him three times. That's scary that they have no qualms about shooting a cop because they're supported by these progressive politicians. And in essence, Bail reform, criminal justice reform, you're supporting the bad guys. They're more important than the cops. And when they when they went stop question, possibly frisk, right? Not stop and frisk. 
when they went and they, they, they really made the restriction on it, I spoke to a, 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 a chief, I'm going to leave him nameless, in the NYPD, and he says, what happens now is when you take stuff like that away, and I'm not saying that you should be violating the Fourth Amendment, what I'm saying is it's still a good tool to be used if it's used correctly. When you take that away, the only one who gets hurt are the cops because now the bad guy's not afraid to carry that gun. He knows, you know, I'm not talking about the innocent guy in the corner, but he knows when there was, they would get out and they do their, their, you know, elevated climb the ladder to stop question and frisk and reasonable suspicion. They know when they got out of the car that if I have a gun, I'm going to jail. So they didn't carry the weapon. So there was not less drive-by shootings. That was brought the shootings out. But once they know the cops can't, are not going to be doing that, they're going to start carrying it. And when you finally get the cop that is aggressive and he steps out of the car, bang, bang, and the shooting start. Yeah. I'm in Times Square all the time doing comedy, and uh, that shooting that was in Times Square, I wasn't there that night, thank God, but um, those, are guys, those are guys that you see walking past you, like the, you see them every single night. The guys with the, the you know, the, the knockoff handbags, um, setting up, picking up, you know, moving their things. They used to move around. Now they just, they're just set up there. Nobody stops them. Nobody moves them. Nobody checks to see if they have a license to, to sell this stuff. Nothing. But that's just one of the people that were there and they got into a fight. But this guy's so comfortable right now that he's carrying his gun with him probably every single night that he's out there. That just was a night that he used it. And do and you blame a cop for not stopping it? You blame a cop for not getting up and saying, let me push this a little bit. What am I pushing? My own fate to get fired? The cop, is, the cop is probably talking to that guy every night because that yes. guy's out there every single night not knowing that he has a gun on him. That's to my point. They're, they're, they're brazing knowing we're not going to do what we used to do. You know, the other thing with that commissioner is that uh, when a guy carries a gun or people are comfortable carrying guns, a little disrespect becomes a shooting. You know, instead where it might be words or, or, or this fight, now the guy's emboldened. He's going to shoot the guy that disrespected him. Yep. And, you know, we used to talk about that in, at CompStat with, and you've probably been to CompStat meetings, um, dice games on the street. Is it the most horrible thing in the world? No, nah, not really. But guess what? You let it go on. Yeah, it's going to become a shooting because they're drinking at the dice game. Someone's going to lose. And when they start to lose, what do they say? Oh, you cheated. Next thing you know, the gun comes out or the knife and someone's stabbed. So that's why quality of life enforcement works. If you let if you let it sit and you don't address it, broken windows, you know, they say broken windows. Broken windows is not broken. We, we, we didn't change. We didn't adjust. You know, quality of life issues. These are things that we need to change and adjust on. I got it. It's a little different, a little more sensitive world that we live in. And we did bring, as the violence and the crime came down, maybe we needed to adjust our programs a little bit. But you don't abolish it now. You just don't go 360 degrees the other way and say, okay, everybody do what you want. And that's what the problem is, is that nobody, there's no uh, there's no penalty anymore for, for what you're doing out there. I get arrested for selling drugs, I get out five minutes later. Process me, I have a cup of coffee and I come back out. It, yep. It's the old days of the 80s. When in when I was walking a foot post over in Prospect and Nostrum, they would spin them in and out, you know, and you, you'd be still sitting in central booking on your lawn chair waiting to get called before the, and the dead guy would already be out. That's a problem. Was, uh, you saw what happened. There was a, a case. Uh, I'm trying to think of where it was. I think it was in California. The guy got out three times in one day. He got arrested three times in the 24, maybe four in a 24-hour period. Uh, it's nuts. C Commissioner, uh, retired Detective Duty Ron, thank you for the Dendal Super Chat, Duty Ron. Commissioner, thank you and the Nassau County Police for a job well done at the Stop and Shop. Here in West Hempstead, we support our Nassau County Police officers and love our police. So there's a one satisfied citizen. So you must be doing a pretty good job, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we had our active shooter over at the Stop and Shop and we, we are as good as, as our closest friends, and Suffolk, FBI, and the NYPD came charging to give us all the intel that we could. We had the guy arrested in three hours over in, in Hempstead. That's and that great. was because we worked together. We're a partnership. That's excellent. Steve Colon, thank you so much for the 999 Super Chat. 
Joe Murray, our great attorney, Joe Murray, thank you for the 999. New York City 1919, thank you for the five dollar super chat. You guys are keeping us in business here. Even though the police commission is here, we still like money, you know. <laughs> uh uh Duty Ron gave us two ten dollar super chats. I don't know if that equals 20. I became a cop because I couldn't do math. So uh, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, Mark, we have to go to our first uh commercial, I think. Uh, it's all you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, you already know about Silk City Hot Sauce if you listen to the show. It's a great hot sauce. Um, the other day, last well, the other day, last night, I, I had some, uh, I had the munchies. So I had, I made some eggs and I threw some Silk City Hot Sauce on it. I uh, used all three flavors with uh, some bacon, even though I'm off of meat right now, and it was awesome. If you like hot sauce and uh, you want it from pure ingredients um, and you want it to be fresh and taste great, and they have a lot of different flavors. Check out SilkCityHotSauce.com and put in the uh, coupon code OTC for off the cuff, and you'll get a 15% discount. And trust me, you'll love it, and you'll thank me. SilkCityHotSauce.com. Any of you guys getting tired of living in New York? Well, Myrtle Beach may be calling. Carol Waters is the realtor. She uh, Carol Waters sells Myrtle Beach. She's a retired 20-year bartender from Fitzpatrick's Hotel in New York City. Her husband, Rob Mayen, was a New York City fireman, a rollover cop, did million-dollar salespeople down in Myrtle Beach so they know everything about the real estate down there. So do yourself a favor. Give Carol Waters a call, 914-261-6681. And Joe Murray, I was just talking about him, Joe Murray, attorney at law. He's a big supporter of police off the cuff. He's a retired police officer, and I hear he's got a mean left hook because he, uh, he has a history with that left hook. And he's got a website, jmurray-law.com, and he's a, he's a great representative of, of cops, Nassau, Suffolk, New York City, and give Joe Murray a call. And again, a great supporter of uh, the Police Off the Cuff show. Any of you guys around on Tuesday night, Police Off the Cuff night at Bordeaux, that's uh, retired Captain Joe Lisi owns that place. We're going to meet and greet people. We're going to shake hands. We're going to kiss babies as long as your baby's between 24 and 30. We'll kiss her. <laughs> and, uh, and come out and see Mark and I, and we'd love to see you there. We're back. We're back. Hey, let me ask you a question. How, how much does it cost to take the uh, Nassau County Police to, uh, test? To take the test? Yeah. I think it's 100 bucks, and they waive it now for those who um, you know have financial issues. You know how much it costs to take the NYPD test? I heard it's free. <laughs> and, and no one's taking it. Is that what does that say? You know, I was just I was just at a party on Saturday and a good friend of mine, his daughter went on the NYPD and beautiful girl. And I, I didn't want to I didn't say anything to her negative because I don't want her to go in with a negative perception. But even yeah. what they're teaching them in the academy, you know, how to get someone cuffed, not putting your knee in their back, you know all of the uh, implicit bias and all the things that are the tools of a 20 you know 21st century law enforcement officer in New York City very tough job to take you know I, I every recruit class that graduates I, I start off with saying when I went on the job first of all most of your parents weren't even born I said and I started with a six shot 38 two drop down pouches chemical mace not and and, and a coca bola now it's a nine millimeter, two extra clips. You got a taser on the other side. You have a baton. We don't call it a Coca Cola, right? And it's pepper spray, not mace. You can actually spray it on your sandwich and eat it. You know, we have <laughs> we we have worked in that de-escalation mode for years now, and and we've been teaching our cops for years. But it all goes out the window. They throw everything out the window, and it's like we're the bad guys. We're the good guys. We, right. We're the good guys. And, and you know, I, I tell people all the time that it's a city job. And, and I said, look, it's still an honorable job. It's still a great job. Um, at the end of the day, it'll come back. We have to believe that, you know. Um, otherwise, we're fooling ourselves here. But it, it, everything goes in cycles. And, you know, it's going to take some of these young leaders that are on these jobs now to come back and make them changes. But it starts with the guy, the guy that runs the city of New York, and he's not doing right by his cops. You know what we used to say, Commissioner, was New York City needs a Brian Watkins moment. And I'm sure you remember that case, mm -hmm. right? And that was the case that we always say, 
turned the city around because it was the public was like, oh my God, a kid from Utah comes here with his family to watch the U.S. tennis open, and his mother gets robbed in Times Square, and the son coming to her aid gets stabbed to death. I, I mean. Think I think we just had that, though. I really do. Because if you look at Eric Adams and if you look at uh, Wang uh, here in New York that are running for mayor, that Times Square incident was um, – because Times Square is like the hub. You can't expect to have the tourists that we used to have and the influx of uh, business that we used to have here if you're having shootings in Times Square. You can't have that. And right the next day – you see Eric Adams out there talking about we have to, uh, you know, we need more cops. We, we have to train the cops better, whatever. But we can't defund the police. Andrew Wang, same thing. The other ones are dragging their ass, but they're going to come. They're going to all have to make a statement. That, that To me, that I think that was the moment right there. I don't think it is. I, don't, I really don't think we've reached it yet. Because Eric Adams also was, uh, he's for the rescinding of qualified immunity. So he's talking one day tough on crime, but he wants cops to have no qualified immunity. So what well, is he talking about? That could change. That could change. His whole thing is right. changing. It's going to change. It's changing overnight. But qualified that's immunity that may change at the federal level. That that may they may come down and just slap it on all of us. You know, it's it's not indemnification. It's qualified immunity, which it means the civil rights part of it afterwards. The indemnification, if you still indemnify, the city still indemnifies their officers. If they stop indemnification, hands are up. It's over. Oh, yeah. and But there, there actually are states that don't indemnify their cops. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a, to me, if you had a, a lawyer, a group, just take like the PBA and say, we're going to indemnify everybody. All you got to do is give us 100 bucks a month. And everybody is going to be indemnified, covered for a million dollars. I don't think the I don't think the union's allowed to do and, that. And nobody. Well, I I spoke to some insurance big big insurance companies, and I asked them. They go, nobody's going to touch it because you, you. It's like going to a jury in Brooklyn. You don't know what you're going to get. Right. You know, some days it there. You know, you get the the well, put the guy in jail. And sometimes you want you go into a civil suit into some of these courts. And yeah, they're paying it's, it's, thirty million dollars for what? Well, I mean, at that point right now, you can only sue for a certain amount, though. You know, whatever the person. No, you, that's not true. I mean, no. look, even George Floyd, we all agree what happened to him was horrendous, but they gave his family $27 million. Where did that's that come from? You're, that's because you're suing the city. If you're suing me personally at this point right now, and the city's not involved in it at all, you can only sue me for a million dollars. That's it. But still, that's a million dollars times third. Uh, what do they got? Uh, uh, 30,000 30, 30, cops? Uh, you know, no, but it's also $100 a month from 30,000 cops. And how many incidents are there a year? But why should I pay 100 bucks out of my money that I'm earning that I'm underpaid already in the NYPD? Because and that's, now I'm going to pay 100 bucks to protect myself from doing the job? No, yeah, the city well, has to indemnify it's, you. It's, There's just no another, way. it's just another form of insurance. No, I know, but, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't be the responsibility of the police officer to pay that money. No, I know. The, I agree the, with you 100%. I'm just saying that it looks like that's the way it's going in the future. Yeah, no, it's them, going. Some, somebody's going to step up and figure out a plan to, way, to take these cops' money and look at the numbers. And so how many times a year we're going to have to give out a million dollars? Even if it's 50 times, it's $50 million. How much money are we getting from these guys? Yep. You know, and, Commissioner, I think that probably the, the – uh, modern day police officer probably should have some kind of umbrella policy uh, to protect well, himself. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe, you know, the other thing is like put your house in your wife's name, but you know, cops get, uh, cops get divorced a lot. So the wives are going to own a lot of houses, you know, <laughs> I, 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 my, my son is going to be a police officer, please God in the next five weeks. And oh, wow, that's great. Yeah. And he just graduated college and I'll, I'll get to swear him in and the whole nine yards. But I've already said to my wife, we're getting him an umbrella policy. Yeah, but it's a lot cheaper for an umbrella policy, right? Because right, I have right. qualified immunity still, and I, and at least now, unless the federal government changes that. And I, and in this county, they support law enforcement. Look, we got 19 legislators. We disagree all the time. 18 and a half of them, and I, there's one guy I, I was worried about, but the, the 18 and a half of them, they support law enforcement. They, they're on the side of it. They still want CCRB and they want oversight. 
which we did not give up in this reform, um, which I get it. That's the, the constituents that they're talking for. But at the same time, when it comes to what we need and how we train and everything, they back us up. They do the right thing. They want better outcomes. you got to better train your police officers. You have to. No, where 100%. Did, where did your uh, son graduate from? He just graduated. So I have triplets. So they all three just graduated last Sunday. Salve Regina, Newport, Rhode Island. They all went there together. Uh, that's great. Wow. That's great. Yeah, now you got, I got you got it, you got it over in one in one act. <laughs> that's tough. That that must have been tough. Did you did you get a discount? No, no, no. They don't give you no discount. Are you serious? I I think it was five hundred bucks off the third kid. Uh, oh, my daughter just graduated today. As a matter of fact, oh, so congratulations! I, wanna, I give her a shout out. Uh, she uh, I don't, what is it called? Cum laude. She graduated cum laude from Cortland uh, University. Good for her. With a business degree and uh, a minor in computers. Uh, Sophia, I love you. Congratulations. You made me so proud. That's great. You know, Commissioner, one thing is that you saved money on, though, over the years is haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, you would have invest, if you would have invested that money, you never know. It could have paid some dividends. Some you know? mornings I just wake up and I go, mm, <laughs> I don't want to pay. You pay. I've been going to the same barber for 30 years. Less and less hair. He's only gone up in price. Nothing ever goes down. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, Commissioner, what... Oh, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I can't picture with your hair. You look so good without it. You look like, <laughs> you. like Bruce Willis. <laughs> Commissioner, let's, we've been talking mostly about uh, law enforcement nationally in New York City. What are your biggest problems in Nassau County? Are you, getting, are you have a gang problem in Nassau now? We we had an MS-13 problem about three years ago. We, we started finding bodies, so it was really four years ago. We just didn't know we had the problem. The bodies went missing, you know, and, and many of them were undocumented. So, you know, you don't really know if they went back, if they got scooped up by ice or where they – we ended up digging about 11 of these kids up. Um, by, um, MS-13 went on a, a, a run there. They killed their own. They killed future that refused to uh, or, uh, fought to not go into the gang. Um, they were young kids, man. Some of them were 15 and 16 years of age. Wow. Uh, and they, and they, when they killed, they're brutal. And, you know, they brought them into the wooded area. They promised them sex and drugs. You know, there's many wooded areas off the parkways and the, the lakes out here in Nassau. And they get them in there and they stick them with a knife. And then they, then they start to decapitate them. They take the head off, they dismember the arms and legs, and they throw them in a shallow grave. And they want us to catch them. You know, it's like that's, they're not burying them too deep. And once we catch them, now it's on to Homicide did an outstanding job working together again with the FBI in Suffolk County. We locked up every single one of them and closed every one of those homicides. So they did a great job. And what what's the hot town for MS-13 in Nassau? Yeah, uh, well... We, we, we have a changing demographics here. So Nassau, it, you know, African-American communities uh, were much larger in, in Hempstead, Uniondale, Roosevelt. Uh, but now they've turned almost 70 percent Hispanic. So there's a lot of good, hardworking people that are in these communities. And then, you, you know, 90 percent of the crime don't be 10 percent of the population. These 10 percent MS-13 guys. Uh, we locked up a whole bunch, and that was the first time, you know, the community worked with us. We worked with ICE to deport them and get them out of here if they weren't going to jail. Um, so it, it made a big difference. We haven't had a number 13 murder in the, in the last year and a half, which is good. That's great. That's great. Yeah. That's great. I know Suffolk, the big hot spot is Brentwood, right? Yep, yep. And, and, and again, working with them guys out there, they were crossovers. They had the sailors, of, I think they called them the sailors. That was an MS-13 click. Uh, we had different groups here, but they would go out. Let, they, in disregard for the human life, it just, get it. You know, we put everything in our investment. You just graduated your daughter. You know, you, you're putting, you're doing the right thing, giving them an education, hard work, you know, and now go out and get a job. Mr. Aquino, you know, come over, just cut your head off. Not even think two, two seconds about it. That's crazy, right? That's all life, life is Life is cheap with that, but, you know, Again, I don't think Nassau and Suffolk puts up with it at the level that New York City does, you know. And, I, well, you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, how frustrated is ICE to not be allowed to do their job with these sanctuary city things, which 
New York happens to be one of them. Yeah. So, so we work very, we work very, you know, ICE is broken into three different things, right? So their border, their, their investigations, and then their immigration. The immigration side of things that, that they still run up, I don't think they're even doing it anymore here in, in the local counties. They're still doing their investigations, which we partner up with them on. But these investigations are money laundering and, and uh, you know, human smuggling and, and, and prostitution and stuff like that. So we work closely with them when it comes to that. We also work at the border with them. We work at the airport, which, you know, does a lot of good work with the NYPD also. But it's it's they're frustrated because, you know, they had the authority for a judicial warrant or an administrative warrant. The courts took away their administrative powers, you know, so that made their job a lot harder. Um, and I think under the current administration down in Washington, it's even loosened the strings up even more. They're not, they're not doing the enforcement they used to do. Hey, uh, we had uh, Dr. Richard uh, Schoberl on, and he specializes in human trafficking. How much of that do you have in, in – um, because you're talking about MS-13, so I'm thinking also they got to make money. There's probably, uh, you know, house, uh, prostitution, stuff like that. Uh, do you have the a lot of – the number one issue we have with human trafficking is prostitution. And we, we got it in the agent side also. You know, we'll, we'll get the, the Chinese massage parlors that will turn into a prostitution, but they're also smuggled girls. So we work closely with our district attorney and we said that we go after them. We don't get a lot, uh, but we get enough. You open up in a town in Nassau County with a massage parlor, within a, two or three days, everybody knows it's a massage parlor and then cops are getting called and we're shutting them down. But as soon as you shut them through. down, they're, they're, they're in another location, right? That's They flip it like that. They go right over into a new place. They'll go to a new town and open up. And the girls ain't going to jail. And they don't cooperate with us. Every once in a while, we get somebody that will cooperate. But most of the time, they're not cooperating. They got where they came from to come to the United States. They got housing. They got, you know, they're getting fed and making some money. And they're also out of fear. They're scared to death to give up the johns. So... Wow. The, 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 those laws they affect you out there as well in Nassau County. The uh, um, the prostitution laws. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. So it's absolutely. legal basically. Yeah, and you know what? Look, we can we can go round and round about prostitution. It's probably the longest living profession, right? That goes back forever. And just legalize it. Do something. We we've gone. We've lost the fight on marijuana. Yeah. You know, they've now decided everybody. You know. Anyone 21 years of old can walk down a, a, my street in front of my house smoking a joint. We can't do nothing about it anymore. Those complaints come this summer are going to go through the roof. Going to go through the roof. Aaron Rodriguez, thank you so much for that forty nine ninety nine super chat. Wow. We can get a haircut now. <laughs> and Bill Ryan from Ryan Investigative Group, thank you so much. I was going to say, Commissioner, that you're right. Prostitution is probably the oldest profession but not as old as the barber. <laughs> you know, the one, <laughs> the one thing with the prostitution, though, because now you're caught up in this dilemma. If it's if these girls are there because uh, they're held against their will, uh, this, uh, this smuggling, human trafficking, you're never going to find out because you can't really even talk to them. It's not an arrest. Well, we usually go in and we do a sting and we'll get the illegal massage, right? You can't you can't get the full prostitution. Obviously, we're not allowed, right? So we go in, we get the illegal massage. They don't have the license for the massage. We arrest them for that. But they're out the door. They know they're out the door. And they're also told, don't cooperate. You cooperate, you're going to have a problem. So they're going to spin right back out the door. Every once in a while, we get, a, we get a young lady that comes on board with us. And then we're able to take down the, 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 um, the guy in charge. Yeah, I, I know that. I mean, human trafficking is a scary thing because uh, it's occurring all over the country. And there's a lot of, you know, kids that are victims and uh, sold into the sex trade and everything. But uh, I mean, maybe you don't even recognize how big of a problem it is in Nassau County. It's such a spread out all over the place. You know? You're 100 percent correct. You, you don't know the problem. You know, we, we we don't have it is what I'd say to you. Right. We get the prostitution places. But how many of, of these real sex trafficking and stuff that's going on that we're not aware of? We do know when we get our missings, but sometimes our missings are never found because, again, they come from a family that's afraid to call us because they're undocumented. 
we don't get involved in, in immigration. You know, call us. Tell us about it. You know, we're not taking and worrying about your immigration status. If you're a victim, come forward. And this way, we can take out the bigger problem. You know, Commissioner, I just want to, I, I still have family out of Long Island, and I want to bitch about one thing to you. Those damn red light and speed cameras. <laughs> they are all over the place. And New York City is doing the same thing. It's just instant cash. It's a cash register. It has nothing to do with traffic safety. And it's really not fair to, to hardworking, uh, taxpaying citizens. You know. So for, for the record, we don't have speed cameras in Nassau County. We only have red light. The city, I think, has the speed right. cameras. Uh, I was on Old Country Road going to that place, Total Wine. I was like, oh, my God. Thank God I had Waze on. Every single red light had a camera. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, look, <laughs> it, it's... We, I laughed, though, when we, we rolled that speed cameras a couple of years ago, and then we retracted them, right? The, the politicians got a lot of heat. But people are like, oh, I'm getting tickets for speeding past the school. You didn't give us a warning. Warning. The school's been there for 75 years. <laughs> that means you've been speeding past there for 75 years, and now we got to give you a warning? Yeah, and the pressure was too much. They pulled them back. They kept the red light cameras. And uh, again, everybody knows you can't fight them. The good news is no points on your license. I got, for the record, I got bagged three times at the same corner, making a right on red where there's no right on red. And I, my wife, at, at, at the end of it, says, are you just going to be continue to be stupid? Or are you going to try to fix it? Like, ah, and I won't run that corner no more. <laughs> hey, um, listen, I made about six grand off of Dogecoin. And uh, I'm thinking about it, doing an investment property. Where where could I go in Long uh, Nassau County over there to invest? <laughs> Every piece of property is going through the roof. <laughs> Everything right now. But so are the taxes. The city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made six grand off a of Dogecoin, so I'm ready to go. I'm I'm a big I'm balling right now. Where are we going? <laughs> Nassau, you know, I live in West. I live in Westchester, and Westchester and Nassau are you know neck and neck with taxes. Westchester may even be higher. Than that sort, it's ridiculous, you know. But uh, the, the property values have gone through the roof because everybody's bailing out of the city. Yeah, you know that that's, whole that's true. vacation the they were doing, and and everybody was moving in, and you know we're gonna live in Brooklyn, we're gonna live in you know you know Starrett City, we're gonna live over here. They're all coming back it now. Happens. And listen, when I was a kid, everybody lived in Astoria, and then something happened, and they all moved to Long Island, and then all of a sudden they came back. It, it just happens. It just that's the way, you know, Bill. You could sell the palatial estates right now. Yeah, I probably could, but you know, you Joe, ready, Murray, you Joe Murray, the uh, attorney Joe Murray says, "Help us on the way with the speed cameras." Thanks to retired NYPD lieutenant and New York State Assemblyman Mike R Riley. Stay tuned. Maybe he can do something. Wait, but wait till New York City has the congestion pricing. There's another thing. Yeah, that's but they're going to that's, that's raise the taxpayer. Yeah. That's a huge problem. They have to figure out with the people coming in from Jersey. That's the new roadblock because uh, Jersey was complaining that, uh, wait a minute, we pay a toll for the George Washington Bridge to come in or the tunnel. You're not going to hit us with another toll just to get into Midtown. So they have to overcome that hurdle. Hopefully that'll be. Um, and then also, if the city has to bounce back. You can't, you can't block people from coming to the city right now. So that uh, congestion pricing is unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, it's going to be put on hold. For I it. hope it never happens. Tim Acosta, thanks for the ten dollar super chat. And Tim says his wife's gotten a red light at every red light camera in Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the worst is when you when you get like your sixth one, you know, from the same camera. Like you always, there's this one thing over here on the Cross Bronx Expressway. You get so annoyed. Because there's always like traffic, and then when you get off that exit to get on the Third Avenue Bridge, you just for some reason you always speed. It's just out of frustration, and whoever did that camera knew they drove on that thing, and they knew the frustration. And you always speed past that, and you always get that summons. I must have got. Well, ten they've done. Them. They've done good analysis. They know where to put them cameras. That's for sure. It's unbelievable. You know, Commissioner. A lot of people in the live chat they like you. They said they. Uh, <laughs> They said you're a good guy. They want him to come back and be a regular. I don't know if he could be a regular, but we were we were thrilled to have him come on tonight. I mean, someone con you someone contacted me for you, I think first, and then you called me. Which was I, I think it was uh, Bob Galgano. That's out, right. Out yeah, here. 
Yeah, and I was, was telling him, uh, I was listening to Eddie Mullins one night and uh, I, 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 you know, watched the show and, and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I was telling my buddy and then he reached out to you and he goes, you got to get on it. I said, okay, I, <laughs> I can't, I can't talk like Eddie Mullins. I love the guy. No, no, you know, so like no, I'm Mullins. glad, I'm so glad you came on and I know you, look, you have to, you have to speak uh, in a political fashion, not like us, we're retired. We can say whatever the hell we want within reason, you know? You know, Cuomo could send some of his troopers to my house. You, you know, know you, 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 and, and I say this to people all the time: you could be res you could be respectful, right? And but at the same point, if we're not standing up for our men and women, uh, we're not leaders. We're not doing the right thing. And you know, it's, it's, you know, Commissioner, except when a politician speaks disrespectfully to our police commissioner, terrible. he's fair game. He's a piece of shit, that guy. You know, and I'll call him out. <laughs> on Mike, on police off the cuff. What's his name again? Oh, Daniel Drum. Uh, <laughs> District 25, you're a piece of shit. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's the new show. Your new show is called uh, Canon's Law. Yeah, Canon's Law. That's right. For, for you Catholics out there, it was, uh, it was spelled with one end, but this those is, can this be, is uh, Canon with two ends, you know? Those are going to be <laughs> clips that you put up. Uh, just uh, You're just ranting about one thing, and they're going to be specific. It's Canon's Law on... This guy, Cannon's Law. That's, 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 right, that's right. That's right. For uh, for our Patreon customers, uh, if you haven't joined our Patreon, by the way, you get exclusive content. And um, you know, Bill has a, a true crime thing there. I have to catch up on my one-on-one -on -one interviews, but uh, I also do a, I, I do a storytelling thing. I have a new story that I'm going to add. Hopefully, I can do it tonight. Um, but Bill has stumbled upon his new show. It's it's going to be called Canon's Law. Yeah, yeah. And he's going to do a little rant, and it's going to be a that's what's going to get you on Fox. I'll, I'll tell you, you know what I did last week, and I got this from our good buddy Duty Ron. Once you have over three thousand subscribers on YouTube, you can go live on your phone from anywhere. So wow. I was sitting in my car out in um, in Jones Beach parking lot, and I had to kill like two hours, and I went live from my phone. It was you know, you, you think it's easy. It's not easy to just talk for 30, 35 minutes by yourself. Well, the live chat helps you a little bit. But just think of it. Police commissioner, you can probably do it because you talk all the time. And you're a professor. He's a professor at Nassau Community. Yeah, he's so got you, a master. You, you, you have a master's degree. Um, yeah. What was it? I'm, I'm trying to think. Of Criminal justice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I And I, I got it from LIU and I teach at, the, I teach at Nassau Community College. I'm an alumnus uh, of Nassau, Nassau uh, Community, too. Buffalo State, John Jay College. So A A B A M S B M F. Bad motherfucker it, was this. It, it took. I shouldn't me, have said that. Some of our, our mothers will say, "No, oh, you're not." It took. To it took me four years to finish my two year degree at Nassau. So. Yeah, me too. Me too. I was in the same classes as Thank you. Thank God for civil service. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's how it used to be like rated as the number one community college in the country. I don't know if it still is. It's still it's still rated very high, but enrollment across the board in all of our community schools have dropped. And it's just you know, look, kids are getting money, they're staying home. Why why do I go to school? Why do I work? And they're gonna keep sending me a check to stay at home. You know, nice. I go out with my friends to the bar, I, I got money to drink and, and eat, and I'm staying home with mommy and daddy. Nobody hey, leaves uh, their home anymore. No offense, but I went to Queensborough Community College. <laughs> For five years, <laughs> and I didn't graduate. So that's now we know why all three of us became cops. That's right. That's right. But well, he's still a success story. He's on police off the cuff. He's a stand-up comic. He's a now I accumulated thirty credits. <laughs> that's unbelievable. You know, we're Mark. We're at uh, getting close to the hour, so I just want to say a few things. Mark is headlining at Brokerage Comedy Club. On Saturday night, I believe it's at 7.30, Mark? 7.30 p.m. showtime. It's quite an honor to be a headliner. And Mark is uh, – don't let this show fool you. He's a really good comic. He's a funny guy. And he's headlining at the brokerage at 7.30. I just want to say how thrilled I was to have uh, the police commissioner of Nassau County, Patrick Ryder, who's also an NYPD alumnus. He did two years on the NYPD. And I, I would like to just at this point invite you back again you're a great guest, and I know we didn't even scratch the surface of your infinite knowledge. And congratulations <laughs> on the graduation of your triplets from college and the impending uh, swearing in of your son to uh, Nassau County Police. That's unbelievable. I mean, just imagine your dad's the PC 
and he's going to be the one swearing you're in. It's got to be the greatest feeling in the world. They're going to run him like an old buck. There's no <laughs> way he's getting around with nothing. They're going to run him hard. <laughs> well, what's your version of the 7-5? Is that where he's going? <laughs> <laughs> what would it be, like Roosevelt or Freeport? Uh, or? Well, Roosevelt, the first precinct, is the hook house in Nassau County. Got, we don't have the high crime you know, that we had 15, 20 years ago. Our, our crime, we we are the safest county in America, voted last year. And I'm still driving my numbers down. I, like I, I told you, I had uh, lunch with the chief in the NYPD the other day, and he asked, how's the shootings? I said, my shootings are down, you know? And, and I go, I, I'm coming off record low years. I got some of my village areas. Hempstead is, is, is always there, but you know, it's still not bad. It's not bad. But does, as, doesn't Hempstead have their own police though? They have their own police department. Yeah. And a good police department. A lot of great cops in Hempstead PD. And Long Beach does too, right? And Long Beach well, and Glen Cove are cities. So they even have their own government in there, you know, their own courts. Right. And, uh, again, great police department. We have 18 villages and two cities out here. Get along with all the chiefs, all the commissioners in it, and we all work together. So the county works. We're, we're big brother on the block because we oversee all the headquarters stuff. We give them the homicide guys, the robbery squad guys, all the heavy crimes we take. They still handle their street crimes and investigate with us, but we'll, we'll finish the deal for them. That's great. Rachella Pranzo says, terrific guest. Proud to have him represent Long Island as commissioner of Nassau County PD. And she's the wife of the great Lieutenant Peter Pranzo of Harlem Raiders fame. He has a book, and he was a legend in the 3-2 precinct uh, many years ago. But that's his wife. Him and his wife, they don't uh, – I don't think they uh, – they leave each other's side for 10 minutes a day, you know, like which, is an <laughs> which is an amazing thing. You know, I, I always said to my wife, the reason we've been together 33 years is because I was out of the house most of the time. <laughs> you know, now that I'm home all the time, it's much tougher, you know. <laughs> Working two jobs has saved many marriages. That's yeah, true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, when yeah. I was in the homicide, I used to teach at a college part time, you know, yeah. and yeah, that did. And I paid for my kids' college cash by doing that. You know? Well, anywho, we're almost at the end of the hour here. Um, I want to thank our guest, Patrick J. Ryder, Police Commissioner of the Nassau County Police Department. Uh, you were a great guest. You were, like Bill said, you're always welcome back. And Commissioner, what, what, back. What, what, what's after this? Are you going to drive a bus for a few years? A bus? Yeah, nah. I'm retired from the police department. <laughs> I used to love the guys who like, oh, I'll drive a bus. I'll do anything. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to do any police work. The 20, and you got some six-year-old kid yelling at your ear that's, that's going right. too fast. <laughs> that's no, no, not, not me. Uh, I'm not leaving yet. I got some time still to do. 38 yeah. years. Let's see, let's see what 40 years. That's the like. amazing thing is that, you, you know, you when you mention the time that you have, and then I look at your face, you look so young. I'm like, wow, that's amazing to have so much time on a job and so much experience and still have so much life ahead of you. Yeah. 20, 21 in the New York City Police Academy. I'll never forget it. Over 2,000 kids in my class, January of 84. It was a nighttime, a day crew and a nighttime crew. And uh, boy, I tell you what, though, I don't know how we did it, but, you know, you, you found time on a Thursday night to go out for beers and then race yeah. to get to the train Friday morning to get back in there. And hope they didn't take your star card. Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> don't take my star card, please. Yeah. We, used to, we used to actually practice, um, you know, ask each other test questions in the bar. <laughs> You'd be talking to some girl over there, and I'd come over and be like, "Is that is that a misdemeanor or a felony?" You know, like while well, you're talking to the girl, you know, we used to. That's how we used to do. It. Yeah. So it was great. It was a great time, man. Uh, and tonight was a great time. Yeah, I, I very much enjoyed it. I'll be back. Yeah, absolutely, Commissioner. We would love to have you back. And good luck with your son coming on the Ness County Police. And uh, do God something speed. about do something about those damn red light cameras, all right? <laughs> Listen, I'm all good with it because I can't afford the three I had. <laughs> so all you, oh, go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say so. So just between us, forget everybody's listening, but if I do get a, a thing, I can send it to you, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what a couple of other duty run asked me that too. Yeah, you think yeah, you, yeah. the PC can take care of my parking summons? I wouldn't even ask you, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know the PC was on my podcast. <laughs> All you Police Off The Cuff fans, we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening and for 
police commissioner, Patrick Ryder, who actually I know his brother-in-law, who was on the NYPD, Lieutenant Murphy. And uh, for Mark DeMeo, thank you so much for watching. Good night. Take care, guys.